Question. Can you see the flaw on this JFOX SAS A319's engines? It's not easy to notice it in a still picture, but you can easily find it in the motion pictures. I'll review this JFOX SAS A319 model in 10 categories. This model comes with a typical JFOX box design with simple graphics. It's clean, good looking, and without unnecessary elements. To me, that's good enough. With such a good protection form, I'll give an 8. This JFOX comes with magnetic gear and a display stand. The plane has a very nice flight angle for display. The nose gear door covers are perfectly made, but the main gear door covers are oversized. They don't fit the slots, so it's rather easy to fall off and go missing. I don't like this at all, so I will only give a 7. JFOX uses the in-flight 200 modes for its A320 family models. So the shape of the nose is way better than JC's and Gemini's. It's not perfect though, because the shape of the forehead lacks the iconic edge on both sides around the cockpit. It's just too round. The shape of the wings and of the winglets are good and realistic. The horizontal stabilizer is also better than those on JC's and Gemini's. I'll give an 8. This pair of IAE V2524 A5 engines is not bad at all, but the fan blades cannot rotate. This is a common issue of all A320 family models of this generation. I've mentioned there is a flaw on the engines. Now here we go, it's the engine pylon on the port side. Look carefully and you will see the two engines do not align. The port size pylon angle is a bit higher than what it should be. Therefore, the engines tilt upward and look a bit weird. I'll only give a 7. I'm happy with the build. The wings and the horizontal stabilizers are very well attached. The engine's ground clearance is good. The gap at the vertical stabilizer's attachment is acceptable. I'll give it a 9. J Fox has done a very good job in making this landing gear. It has captured the unique feature of the A320 family's landing gears, which is all three gear legs do not stand 90 degree vertical. In fact, the nose gear angles forward slightly whereas the main gears angle slightly backward. J Fox has done a very nice job. I'll give Undercarriage a 9. For details, all the lights, antennas, satcom are presented very well. The APU exhaust is very detailed and is way better than JC's and Gemini's. Yet, the nose gear leg doesn't have the landing lights. I'll give details an 8. This SAS Viking Longship Retro Luthery is very impressive. All the logos and titles are precisely made. The emblems of the three Scandinavian states are very elegant. J Fox has paid attention to all small details, so it hasn't missed the little SAS title on the engines here. I say it deserves a 10 for luthery. The painting quality of this model is a little better than JC's and Gemini's in general. You can't find discrepancies like double printing. The only tiny complaint I have is the a bit oversized windshield here. You see, it's so big that the lower edge is actually printed outside the garage position. Anyway, I would still give a 9. I'm sure J Fox notices the engine pylon issue, and I'm sure it will fix it in the next edition. But given that this really nice SAS retro livery is not widely popular around the world, the demand may not be big enough for the manufacturers to make additional additions.
So I guess the chance to get a revised new release is rather low. So I think this batch deserves a nine. I'll give this J Fox SAS retro a total of eighty-four points in my Eric index. See you next time.